So my name is Vinicius Gouveia, I can go by Vini, and uh, I'm an assistant professor at Texas a and Life Research. I'm based in Amarillo, Texas. And the idea is to talk a little bit about real-time beef cattle monitoring in feedlot, uh, especially during the receiving and finishing phase. Um, before I start, I'm gonna give you a brief uh, idea of my background and research experience. I work with ruminant nutrition I'm a beef cattle nutritionist, and the focus of my, my research pro program is feedlot nutrition and health. So I'm, I'm doing some research on, uh, on receiving cattle, and I'm using nutrition to improve immune response of newly received cattle, lightweight, uh, high risk calves. And um, so it's pretty much like nutritional immunology. And I'm also doing like finishing trials. I'm, I'm trying to to do different ingredient evaluations, inclusion of byproducts, feed additives to improve, reduce feeding costs and improve uh, uh, performance and uh, carcass productions in, in the finishing phase. So you're probably thinking, what do I know about real time cattle monitoring? So I have two answers for that question of very little, especially if we compare with the experts, engineers, statisticians, data scientists, but I also know enough to understand what has been done and to provide these experts new insights about our main issues and challenges. So what you should expect uh, in this presentation is a different, I'm gonna provide you a different perspective of the precision management. Actually, I think I can be the bridge between the experts and the feedlot industry. I mean, I leave the feedlot industry, so I know the problems and the challenge, the issues that we face so I think that can, um, can give you an idea how I can see the problems and, uh, and uh, how I can see that we can, uh, we can use precision management to uh, overcome these challenges. So for this uh, presentation, I'm gonna talk, I choose only three different topics. Body condition score, I knew that Zach would present the body condition score. Um, cattle activity and movement, especially when we talk about animal health and also feed bunk management. It's uh, pretty much related with feed delivery. So let's start with the body condition score. So as Zach mentioned, it's a very practical and an inexpensive indicator of fat uh, reserves or uh, energy reserves in beef cows easy or it at least should be very easy to implement by the producers. So you can see here, uh, let me see if I can move the pointer. So you can see like body condition score changing from one to nine different uh, body fat percentage changing from like three to 34. And pretty much we usually have a cow body condition score five as our, let's say baseline. Cows over six, five, uh, body condition score five, six, seven, eight, or nine, they usually are retaining more energy than they should. Uh, body condition score uh, four or lower is usually mobilizing some like fat, uh, losing weight. So this is pretty much the idea of the body condition score. We also know that the body condition score is um, highly correlated with the reproduction aspect so we can increase pregnancy rate if we increase body condition score we can increase the percentage of cows in the breeding season that's going to produce like a calf and we can decrease postpartum interval so this is this is very important for us in the in the beef industry and of course is a very subjective measurement it's it's hard uh, to detect, to, to establish, and uh, to score the cows. There's uh, the variation among scores select for the same animal is extremely large. So we can see difference uh, ranging from minus one to two points in that one to nine scale. So here you can see in the right side, um, I got these slides from Dr. Muriel, University of Florida. They have an extension program there uh, on a body condition score training. They're trying to, uh, to train the, the cow calf producers to, to body condition score the cows. And this is like this graph show you when before they start the training, they usually, Dr. Muriel usually show them like one um, or three images of the same cow and ask the producers to 
uh, to do the body conditioning score. And you can see a lot of variation uh, before the training starts. And then um, after the training, we can decrease that variation. So they usually like learn how to, uh, to do the body conditioning score and can uh, increase uh, the way that they're scoring the cows. So one way to, to reduce, to decrease the variation is training people. So we, most of the, the producers, they, they don't know if that, that we have the decision tree and uh, the step-by-step -step that we should follow to, to do the body condition score. And again, here you can see that we can, this is the percentage of the audience choosing the correct body condition score, 49% before the training, 62. So it's a good improvement after the training, but we still have a lot of room here to, to, to improve. So this is where I think Zach, um, he was like doing most of the, so since 2000, 2008, we are, we are doing like some, uh, some research to do the body condition score using images to do the body condition score. The idea is to increase uh, accuracy and precision that we're, we're scoring body condition score in the cows. And uh, I think this is, this is very important. We can cover that 40% uh, that I showed you uh, in the previous slide. But this is the point that I want to highlight. I think besides the variation among scores for the same animal, uh, what we should try to uh, go ahead and search and improve is, okay, let's say that we have a, a cow body condition score three or body condition score four, and you are 100% sure that is a body condition score three or four, uh, doesn't matter. The point is, is a body condition score three and gaining weight, retaining energy, or it's a body condition score uh, three and losing body weight. So this is the point. I think that we should go ahead and try to, uh, to get a better idea because that would help me to, as a beef nutritionist, to, um, to predict the days to gain one body condition score. And then we can maybe think about sort the cows, maybe two different groups. And I can prepare, I can formulate this specific supplement for this specific group so that they're gonna get at the beginning of the breeding season with the, in a good shape with the, the right body condition score. So I think this is the point that we might need in the future to look at and see. So at this, at the same, let's say in this, uh, in a herd with like 15, 20 cows with body condition score three, uh, can I detect the cows that are like losing, still losing weight or those that are like gaining weight so that will allow me to formulate two different supplements and feed them uh, in that way that they're going to be in a good shape at the beginning of the breed season. So uh, if they're mobilizing or retaining energy, this is probably the question that we should um, answer that will allow us as like beef nutritionist to do the supplement, the, the right supplement for these cows. And I think another important point is data acquisition. So um, I usually, we, we have different partnerships and uh, I, people usually call and, hey Vinny, can you collect like images and take these pictures? It's very easy for us in a research facility to bring the cows, let's say two, three, four times and uh, get as much image as they need. Uh, but we might need to think if that's going to be feasible in a commercial operation, because if you cannot collect the data there, then you cannot analyze any data. And uh, I think this is where we might need to put together like specialists, technical specialists and, uh, and all the experts in uh, data analysis and see the best way to do the data acquisition. I think this is the first step. Another topic that I've I brought for this presentation is animal health. Uh, bovine respiratory disease, also known as BRD, is uh, probably the single largest health issue faced by the feedlot industry. Uh, it usually costs eight to nine hundred million dollars annually, and the biggest issue is also detection and uh, treatment. So it's hard to detect the sick calves and hard to to treat the the right calves. The, the, the calves that are sick, actually sick. 
So you can see here in this picture that like we usually lose almost $400 in those calves that need three treatments for, um, for BRD. For calves that usually show some um, clinical symptoms of BRD, more than $200. So it's, it's a, a huge impact in the feedlot industry. And I like for the body condition score, it's hard to detect sick calves. So what we usually do is we watch for the, uh, the clinical symptoms. So we have what they call DART system. The acronym stands for uh, depression, anorexia, respiration, and temperature. Temperature is usually the objective measurement that we use uh, uh, to decide if we're gonna doctor or not those calves. So, but pretty much we usually watch the calves. So nasal discharge and ocular discharge is usually a good uh, sign of sick calves. But we also try to see like calves losing weight, not approaching the feed box, calves that are separated from the herd. So all this um, are like not objective ways to detect the sick calves. And we usually score them from zero to four. So zero is, of course, a healthy calf. Uh, one is a mild, two moderate, three severe, and four is a very sick calf, very, cannot like stand and walk. So it's, it's easy for us to detect like the, the very, very sick calves, but it's hard to know like each calf we should, uh, we should use antimicrobial treatment or not. Uh, most of the feed yards, they usually pull the calves. So they have like pen riders to just look at the calves and pull the calves that have some of these symptoms. And then they tamp, they bring them to the processing barn. They tamp these calves. And if they have fever, they decide for the treatment or not. They usually, if they're one or two, that's dart score one or two, they usually, and do not tamp, they, they, they don't have fever they usually wait a little bit, but maybe we're missing the opportunity to treat sick calves and, uh, and maybe we're losing like some calves, sick calves that we're not uh, giving the antimicrobial treatment. So what I'm trying to, to do now is to do like early detection of BRD using 3X accelerometers, pretty much like based uh, using the movement to predict if they're sick or not. So we, we did this trial, we installed the accelerometers in, um, in, um, in calves that were healthy, no symptoms, and, uh, and calves score one, two, and three. Uh, and we, we monitored these calves for 15 days. So day zero, when we, we brought them to the processing barn and uh, we bleed them to collect blood samples to see if they were really sick or not. Uh, body weight, temperature, then day 10 again, and then day 15. So we have 15 days of activity of these calves. And the idea is first um, increase the sensitivity and um, to identify the sick calves. So our first uh, idea is to see if we can uh, sort health calves from the sick calves. Then if we can, we might need to go and move to the second step. We can maybe score the sick calves. So maybe different uh, sickness scores for the sick calves. We also have like the chance to see how many days are required to detect the sick calves. So we have like 15 days, but if we can detect like with two or three days, that would be great. But maybe the data set will show you that we need more than 15, 15 days. So this is the uh, another point. And also the best day to, to get the body temperature. So we have, we installed in these, all these calves, we installed the small uh, probes that allowed us to collect body temperature every minute during the 15 days. So we're gonna see if there's like one specific day to get body temperature, because sometimes just moving them to the processing barn to, to do like the, the visual evaluation, usually increase the body temperature. And we usually treat calves that we think it's they're sick because they, they have fever, but they're, they're not sick. So our final objective is pretty much decrease the number of retreatments. Uh, we are my, we, we are probably treating a lot of calves that doesn't need to be treated and we are not treating some calves that must be treated. 
So this is, this is the idea. And the last uh, topic that I think it's uh, relevant for the feedlot industry is the bank management. What we know about feed, the feed bank management, well, it's, there's more than just dump the feed in the bank to, to feed the calves every day. Uh, there's a lot of uh, science behind feeding the calves. Um, in a commercial operation, we usually have the, what we call a sleek bunk. We, we usually have no feed remaining in the bunk before the next feed. And uh, in some way, it's easy to, to get like sleek bunk. It's just like feed up an amount of, it's not a lot and you're gonna be sure that they're gonna sleek. But the problem is you might be limiting or restricting this animal. So there's like a narrow line between sleek bunk and feed restrictions. So the idea with the sleek bunk is to maximize the feed intake and the feed efficiency, decrease waste and spoilage and the daily fluctuation, avoiding metabolic disorders like bloat and rumen acidosis. But the problem is when they should sleek the bunk would be great if they could all always like sleek right before next feeding, but it's almost impossible to know when they're gonna sleek the bunk, finish with that feed. Many of these feed yards, they usually have like the pen riders uh, reading the bunk during the night, 11, midnight. That would help them to, to know at least they have like some feed left between, let's say, 11 in the night or midnight to next morning. But it's, it's still hard to know uh, when they're going to sleep, if you're going to restrict them, limit them to the feed or not. So we are using cam cameras to... Uh, to predict the amount of feed in the bunk, pretty much like how much feed, because like for body condition score, for, for the dark score, it's, it's visual. It's, it's easy to know if, if it's as liquid or not, but it's hard to, to go like through one, half, two, and three. So we are trying to, to predict the amount of feed in the bunk and um, also improve the feed delivery decisions, what we call like feed calls, how much we should provide them in the next day if there's leak. Pretty much if they sleep early in the night, maybe we should bump them a little bit more if they sleep at like right before next feeding. So this is a fine tune that we might need to check and see if we can improve. And actually determine the optimal clean up time. So when they should sleep the bunk, we're not gonna be there watching them. So the idea is to, to detect when it's gonna be the best time. And uh, so we can maximize feed intake and avoid feed restriction. Uh, so summary, I think, uh, from my perspective as a beef nutritionist, I think, uh, collaborative projects, they're very important because we can combine the expertise of the livestock specialist and the data scientist. Uh, there's only one goal. It's like bring something that can increase profitability of farmers and ranchers. So, um, I think, uh, the adoption of this technology is an avoidable way in the next, especially in the next generation of farmers and ranchers. So um, I think everything that we can do to, to combine uh, technical side and, uh, and data analytics and uh, the specialists. So I, I think this is the way to, to get a good, good results and a good tool to, that can be used by the, the producers. Thank you.